Today, we'll talk about the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Since there are a lot of differences, we're going to talk about three of them. First is the uncertainty principle. Second is the quantized energy. And lastly, quantum tunneling. To start with the uncertainty principle, I'll give you an example to understand the differences. So here we go. In classical physics, it's like we have a grid full of x and y axis. Then we draw a line between. If we need a slope and also a point on the coordinate on the line that we drew, we can calculate any point of the line. Let's say when x is equal to 0 and y equal to 2, and they have a slope of 1, we can evaluate what y value is when x equal to 100 and when x equal to negative 100. We're able to tell basically any point. Because in classical mechanics, if we know enough information, we'll be able to predict past, current, or future of what will happen. But in quantum mechanics, things are a little bit different. The question will be changed to something like, if a person take a step after a unit of time, either forward or backward, where the person can be after, let's say, 10 units of time. So the scenario changed quite a bit. When you're talking about quantum mechanics, the question will become something like, after a few units of time, where can he be? Or where is most probably going to be? Because there's no fixed answer on where the person can be, let's say, after 10 units of time. He can go 10 steps forward without taking a step back. He can be somewhere in the middle, right? He can also be somewhere behind where he started. So in here, the position becomes a range of possibilities. Unless we take a look or take observation of where the person is, we don't know where he is. So in quantum mechanics, if you know the person's current location, you're not able to tell where he's coming from from the past or where he's exactly going in the future. So in order to predict where he can be, let's say, te in 10 units of time, you have to use something called probabilities because you're not 100% sure where he will be after, let's say, 10 units of time, right? Unlike classical mechanics, you got a line, you got a slope, you got to give it a value, you know where exactly every single other value can be. In quantum mechanics, if you're given time, you know, he can go forward and backward but you just don't know where he will exactly end up to. That's basically position uncertainty in a nutshell. In quantum mechanics, there's also another consideration called momentum. Momentum is Planck constant divided by the wavelength. Let me think of an example to better describe it. Let's say you and your friend are grabbing a rope and you slowly make a jerk on the rope, a very strong jerk, there's one kick that basically travels from your end to your friend's end. If you ask your friend, Hey man, where is the position of the wave? Well, it's very easy to tell. There's only one kick that travels from your end to his end. So you say, okay, whatever that thing is moving right there. But if you ask him, hey, what's the wavelength? Well, he, you probably say, I don't know. Let's say in our situation, where you swing the rope up and down constantly, creating a sine-like waveform on the rope. And right now, if you ask a friend, hey man, what's the wavelength of this rope? Now he can answer you pretty certain the wavelength is such and such, or the difference between each period. But now if you ask the other question, hey man, where exactly is the wave? Well, he doesn't know. The relationship of knowing more on position means that you will know less on wavelength and if you know more on wavelength, you know less on position is basically Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Next up, we're going to talk about quantized energy. To talk about quantized energy, I have to mention something called the Planck's constant. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th meter squared times kilogram over second. Have you ever wondered why this number is so small? Well, basically, there's a scientist named Max Planck who was doing experiment on black body radiation. He realized that energies are sent out by number of packs. Each pack is a small, tiny bit of energy. 
and that energy is Planck's constant. Oh, that's very interesting, because in classical physics, energy can be divided into very small parts, and there's no limit to it. But Max Planck found out that the smallest unit you can ever get to is Planck's constant. To visualize this phenomenon, we can use a triangular prism. Some of you may try to shine sunlight into a triangular prism to create a rainbow before. The prism separates the sunlight into many different colors. Each of them correspond to a different frequency, and their energy is frequency times Planck's constant. So, there's a rule that physicists often use to separate classical physics from quantum, which is, if Planck's constant appears in the equation, it's quantum physics. If it doesn't, it's classical physics. The last difference I want to talk about is quantum tunneling, and this is a very interesting effect. Have you ever tried to play tennis or ping pong against the wall? Each time when you hit the ball against the wall, you do expect the ping pong or the tennis ball to bounce back from the wall so you can hit it again with the racket. It will certainly be very weird if the ball gets stuck in the middle of the wall while there's no hole in the wall. In quantum mechanics, things like that can happen because particles are very small. They have a tendency to go through the boundaries into something called the classically forbidden region. Well, what's a classically forbidden region? It's basically stuff that we're not going to see with our naked eye. So, in a quantum world, particle can go through the boundary, or like ping pong balls or tennis ball go through the wall, either get stuck inside the wall, or simply vanish on one side and reappear on the other side. And that's it for the three different things about quantum physics and classical physics. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.